I'm frequently asked, are oral agreements enforceable? And the answer is, yes. There are some limitations to oral agreements, but a promise that's made orally and accepted orally is valid in a number of circumstances. There are limitations to oral agreements. Among them, if it is a real estate contract to acquire land, if it's for a commission for the sale of land, a real estate related uh, compensations, if it is a matrimonial contract, if it is a contract that cannot be performed within one year, contracts that may be performed within one year are enforceable. It may involve a 20-year relationship, but if the full performance of the agreement can occur within one year, it's enforceable. A real estate lease for less than one year is enforceable. A guarantee agreement to pay the debt of another must be in writing. It cannot be oral. Loan agreements in excess of $50,000 made by financial institutions must be in writing. Sale of goods over $500 must be in writing. There are a number of specific types of agreements that must be in writing. Most of them are referred to as the statute of frauds, and those specific items have to be in writing. An administrator and estate agreement must be in writing. But on the whole, I have been astounded by the large number of recoveries and uh, legal actions that have been successful for oral agreements. Now, the oral agreement's got to be specific, and you almost always have to have a witness or an email or some verifying documentation or performance for a considerable time by one of the parties to establish the specific terms. How long is the contract? When does it start? When does it end? What are the duties of the parties? What's the consideration? They can all be oral, but the proof of that is far more difficult than a written agreement. Over the years, I have litigated many real estate agreements, uh, real estate contracts with builders, developers, consumers, purchasers, whether it's regard to a failure to provide the services rendered, defects of the, of the properties, uh, failure to timely perform a contract. And if they had only come to me initially before the contract was signed, they would have saved thousands of dollars. Boilerplate contracts have their place. And in some occasions, they're useful for limited purposes. But if you're going to buy a home, you need to have a lawyer look at the contract before you sign it. And certainly, if you're going to have a home built, and all the issues with regard to drainage, and size of the home, and square footage, and quality, and glass, and marble, and flooring, and utilities, and appliances, and all the things that can be less than what you agreed to in your agreement, you're going to be in a tough spot if they're not in your agreement before you make your agreement. There are other forms of contracts that are less uh, uh, expressed than those that I've been discussing. There's an implied contract. There are unilateral contracts where someone performs the contract and the other party then is bound to perform. Uh, there's quasi-contracts. If someone is unjustly enriched, uh, but it's not in writing, uh, you're entitled to a rec recompense in certain circumstances for a violation of those contracts. Take caution. As a general principle, absent express fraud, palpable fraud, if you sign a contract, you're bound by it. The terms mutual assent will be implied by most courts in almost all situations, if you sign a contract, if you refuse to read it, your signature is the mutual assent. And it's a very significant burden to get around that 
if you sign something that you didn't read and you feel like was not part of the agreement. Hence, see a lawyer and make sure what you're signing is what you know the terms of your agreement actually are. Nay, call law firm, may I help you?